So Felix Fathom is a very intriguing character to say the least. But after waiting to finally get a little more screen time from him, I can gladly say Felix is more nuanced than I originally thought. Felix isn't your average villain. Nope, in fact, he's an anti-villain. Want to find out why? Well, keep watching. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's the one and only your girl, The Cartoon Hotspot, and today I'll be analysing the episodes Emotion and Pretension. If you're interested to hear my thoughts, then stick around, give this video a thumbs up, and for new viewers, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell button for post notifications. Without further ado, let's begin. To briefly analyse the episode Emotion, the episode begins with Adrianette on an ice cream date, when all of a sudden Adrian becomes withdrawn and secretive. He leaves and tells Marinette that he has an event to attend to but forgot to tell her before. Marinette then discovers the event he went to was the Diamond Ball and she decides to crash the party by taking Zoe's invitation that she offered. When she arrives, she sees Amelie basically having a breakdown because Gabriel apparently did not invite Felix and her and she mentions how since Emily's disappearance, he's become cold and withdrawn, implying that before he was full of life and happiness. When Marinette spots Adrian, she tells him that she loves him and he didn't need to keep the ball a secret from her, only to discover that the person she's talking to isn't Adrian. It's in fact, Felix. They're looking at me like I'm a monster. Look closer, Marinette. They're the monsters. Uh, you're not Adrian. <laughs> Felix, where's Adrian? What did you do to him? That's right, the famous twin switcheroo. And at that moment, Felix transforms into Argos and pretty much starts snapping people out of existence by sending them to this red moon sentient monster that he created. Yikes. The only exception is Marinette, whom he spares as he states that he deeply cares for Adrian and would never do anything to hurt him. So he'll keep Marinette safe since she also cares for him and isn't a monster like everybody else at the ball. Marinette transforms into Ladybug and faces Felix. There is one thing I'd really, really like to mention. When Argos and Ladybug go head to head, I just can't help but to praise Christina V's performance. You could truly hear the anger, pain, and most importantly, desperation in Ladybug's voice. Miraculous. So that's it then! You're working for Monarch! You're the reason why I lost the other Miraculous in the first place! And why he took them! You gave them to him without any regard for the consequences that might have on the people of Paris! True. All season, Marinette had been blaming herself for losing the Miraculous and even the people of Paris began to lose faith in her. She needed one chance to make it right. She's been waiting all season for Felix to return and wreak havoc in Paris, so she can at least be one step closer to regaining all of the stolen jewels. So when she says, I'll never give you my miraculous. It's that Marinette determination and fire that I've been waiting to hear all season. The Marinette fire that tells you she isn't here to play. She means business. Because despite failing Paris, one thing's for sure is that she'll uphold her promise in making sure Monarch doesn't get hers or Cat Noir's miraculous. When Ladybug summons her lucky charm, she actually doesn't receive anything. And I've seen a lot of people confused as to why she didn't get an object. And I think I might have an explanation. Instead, she remains calm and lets Felix snap her out of existence, hoping he'll eventually bring everyone back within a matter of time. All that's left is Kagami who confronts him and Argos decides to bring back Adrian to show that he didn't hurt Marinette. Only, Marinette isn't where he left her, because obviously she's transformed as Ladybug. Felix begins to panic as he believes he lost control over his power and hurt an innocent person, something he stands against. And at that moment, he snaps his fingers and brings everyone back. At the end of the episode, Felix apologises to his senti friend, the Red Moon, and releases it from existence. Okay, now let's analyse why this is so important. I've had a theory since the episode Jubilation that Ladybug's lucky charm is a metaphor for her subconscious. After all, Ladybug is the embodiment of luck. Her lucky charm is basically her intuition or subconscious, which always aids her in winning the battle. But in this episode, she didn't receive anything. Why? Because Felix slash Argos is a different type of adversary. Certain tactics won't work on him. In order to beat him, she had to make him do the one thing he stands against taken the life of a fellow senti being. Because Felix is an anti-villain, he has a mission that's for a good cause, but his methods are a bit, well, not heroic. Those kinds of villains believe that they have nothing to lose. But the thing is, everyone has something to lose. In Felix's case, the one thing he had to lose was his moral, the cause he stands for. And by making him believe that he let his powers run loose, 
Felix began to freak out and lose his usually calm and calculating demeanor. In other words, Ladybug messed with his mind. Sometimes in order to defeat someone, you have to do nothing. You have to let them be their own downfall. Violence and fighting isn't always the answer. Sometimes to beat the villain, you have to be the better villain. In other words, play their game, but be better at it. And I'm not saying Ladybug is a villain, but in everyone's story, there's an antagonist. Ladybug might be the hero, but for Felix's mission, she's clearly in his way. In Ladybug's case, for her to beat Felix at his own game, she had to make him believe that she too had nothing to lose, which serves as a drive for tension in this scene. You're right. I can't defeat you. But winning isn't always what we think it is. For the last time! Never. All of humanity will disappear if you don't hand it over? Are you willing to pay that price? You're the only one who can answer that question. <laughs> now let's analyze pretension, because we're not done talking about Felix and his complexity. For this, I do have to give a brief trigger warning as the subject of parental abuse will be discussed, so viewer discretion is advised. In this episode, Tomo and Gabriel are conspiring on how to get rid of Felix, who poses a major threat to their plan, but are also trying to drive a wedge between Marinette and Adrian in order to get Adrian and Kagami together. I'm not going to analyse Marinette and Gabriel's confrontation because it's best to dedicate an entire video to that, simply because there's just so much to pick out. I promise you guys will love it. Kagami tries to tell her mother that out of respect for Adrian and Marinette's relationship, she should really stop trying to get Kagami and Adrian together, only to be shut down by Tomo, who says that if you're not your own master, you're already your own slave to your emotions. Basically, she's trying to convince Kagami that she's weak and that she's not being honest with herself and that she does belong with Adrian. However, Argos overhears the entire conversation and kidnaps Kagami because he believes he's doing her a favour by setting her free from her mother. The two of them talk whilst Tomo is akumatized into Ikari Gozen, again, whose task is to track down Felix and regain the Peacock Miraculous. Ladybug and Cat Noir also join the party but are conflicted on whose side they're on. Whilst escaping, Kagami realizes her mother truly doesn't care about her, and Felix mentions that his father was way worse. And in the sewers, when Kagami questions why Felix doesn't just create a senti monster to help them escape, he responds by saying, Eu me recuso a criar um ser só para eu manipular, controlar, maltratar e acabar destruindo ele. Like I said, Felix is an anti-villain. His actions are questionable, but he means well for a good cause. But pay attention to what he says here. He tells Kagami that when you bring a human being into the world, you have a responsibility to them. You have to protect them and help them discover their own meaning of existence and depriving them of that basic human right is monstrous. To reiterate what Felix said, when a parent or parents bring a child into this world, that baby is eventually going to grow up and become a teenager and then adult and decide their path. As parents, it's your job to guide them, advise them and support them in forging their path. Of course, you can't tell them exactly what to do because they have to figure everything out for themselves. The most you can do as a parent is guide them, even if they steer off the right direction. Felix's little speech alludes to the implication that Colt Fathom, his father, was abusive towards Felix. Because Felix is a senti being, Colt probably saw him as less of a human being, similar to how Gabriel and Tomo only see Adrian and Kagami as objects rather than people with actual feelings. Also, remember back in the episode Felix, when Cat Noir asked, Bet you don't have a lot of friends acting the way you do. Am I wrong? Notice how Felix looked kind of sad. So Felix implied that his father was abusive and practically hated him. And this could explain why Felix seems to be a lone wolf. He doesn't have any friends because his father traumatized him so badly to the point that if he couldn't feel safe among his own parent, someone whose job is to protect you and love you, how could he ever feel safe around people and trust them? It's a trauma response. When a parent mistreats a kid, it changes that kid's outlook on the entire world. And this would explain why Felix tends to be more patient with Kagami and especially Adrian. Felix had to grow up by himself without the help of a parent. It's implied that Amelie isn't really aware of how badly Colt treated him. Felix had to learn a lot of disturbing things about himself, which is why from day one, he's been interested in the Peacock Miraculous, and which is why he wanted to free everyone from controlling people, such as Tomo and Gabriel. Anyways, with the help of Kagami, Ladybug and Cat Noir defeat Ikari Gozen, but unfortunately, Felix got away with the Peacock Miraculous again. 
Kagami attempts to reason with her mother one last time, but Tomo asks her to return the family crest, which is the ring, and basically disowns her. Yikes. But at the end of the episode, Felix gives Kagami the real ring because he somehow knew or predicted that Tomo would ask for it back. So he went ahead and made a fake one that Kagami had been wearing this whole time. The real one probably contains her amok, meaning Kagami is free to make her own decisions and be in control of her own life. And that brings us to the end of this analysis video. Hopefully you guys can see just how nuanced Felix is, like emotion and pretension definitely added more layers to his character, and I can only expect more in future episodes. Honestly, emotion has got to be my favourite episode from this season so far, I'm not even kidding, no other episode had had me on the edge of my seat. As promised, my next Miraculous videos will be a detailed analysis on the Gabriel vs Marinette scene in Pretension and then analysing the episode Revelation. But, as always, now I want to put it to you guys. What did you think of Emotion and Pretension? Hated it? Loved it? Let me know down in the comment section. But as for today, that's it from me and I'll see you again next time. Bye!